Good morning, my name is Faith Johnson, and I am one of the primary teachers at Rocky Mount. May we bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for allowing us to see another day. And Lord, I want to thank you for allowing me to share your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today, our lesson is Wise Up, and we will be coming from Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, verse 33 says, But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Wise up means to make or become aware. I often heard my granny say, always make wise decisions. In other words, she always says, use wisdom. Wisdom is thought to be something a mature or older person has, but as we see in today's time, that's not always true. You have to pray and ask God for wisdom. Ask God to show you and give you wisdom. Let's discuss a few places where wisdom is mentioned. James chapter 1 verse 5, Isaiah 11 verse 2, and 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19 through 20. Wisdom can be read throughout the Bible. Young people, wisdom is knowing you're about to do something wrong and walking away. Wisdom is getting an education, allowing teachers to teach you what you need to know to go to college, military, or the workplace. Wise up. Thank you, be blessed, be safe, and seek with Good morning, my brothers and sisters. How blessed we are to be back in the Lord's house one more time to come before you uh, to uh, give what the Lord had given me to give to you. We hope and pray that everything is well and everybody's doing fine. The Bible uh, says in John chapter 10, Verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if you enter in, you should find rest for your soul. And what I want to talk to you today about Jesus is our door to our salvation. In and out, he is the only way to get to heaven. A door is nothing more than a way in or a way out. It's a mere opening in a wall. But without the door, there would not be a way to get to the other side or penetrate a barrier. Our purpose today is to look at some of the doors uh, in our lives. Doors are symbolic, representing access or an opportunity for movement that may not have existed before. One relationship that we all know is that the door determines if one is in or out. Like it or not, we are citizens of a world that functions and works itself by doors. A door characteristic may be visible or invisible. And sooner or later, you will be forced to deal with the reality of your doors. The very first door that I think is highly critical to look at is the door of economics. The size of your bank account determines the doors that open or shut in your face. And I am thankful to all of you for doing what you have done uh, in compliance with Malachi. When Malachi asked us to bring our tithes and our offering uh, into the storehouse because of your kind giving. And doing what the Lord uh, would have you to do, these doors continue uh, in the church to be open. And because of this, God said, if you sin, bring your tithe. He said he will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing. That there will not be room enough to receive it. And I don't know about you, but I want every window in my house to be open. So I can get everything that God, amen, has in store for my family. Your investments and the size of your account determines where you live and how well you live. If you live among the hills, what you have can take you where you want to go. But on the other hand, if you live among the have not, don't even bother to leave home because you are not going anywhere. And if the ship you were waiting on came in already with nothing on it, you know about closed doors. 
But having money opens many doors. And may I say, amen, that you need to practice a giving. Amen. Because a closed fist don't have anything coming in and it does not allow anything to go out. And in this day and time, it's very critical that we look at another door called racism. Racism is a door that needs to be shut. Every day, we live with the reality of racist doors. With all the riots uh, going on in our country as I speak, you need to know this morning that it is nothing new. The fact that we live in today in a multicultural society may lead some of us to believe that color and race don't matter anymore. Some of us believe that the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream has become a reality, but don't be misled. Race still matters. Racism uh, in our day and time has taken on another form. Bigotry has put on new clothes, but every once in a while, something will happen to remind me of who I am, amen, and where uh, I come from. It's a sad day in our land in which we live that people are still doing idiotic things that causes the nation uh, to be in an uproar. And we are living in an uproar, not only because of violence, but also because of this virus that is affecting our land, causing us uh, to do and stay in Amen. And do some things that we normally would not do. Every once in a while, a door was slammed in my face and I'm reminded and I remember why. Every once in a while, somebody would say something about racial profiling. That is, allowing one race to go by and then taking the next person, next race to go by and issue a ticket. Or there is a need to whip we draw or realign the African-American neighborhoods. I am reminded that the struggle is not over yet. We need to make sure in our various homes that all of us are registered to vote. If you are not registered, please go down and register to vote. And if you are a registered voter, please, when the time comes, Go to the poll and cast your vote. Your vote does matter. Matter not to me whether or not you vote for Republican or Democrat, but just make sure that you vote for whoever it is that you think will do a better job. Every once in a while, someone will slip up and say something that is uh, politically incorrect that reminds me that my daddy was right when he told me I'm going to be black all my life. And because I am of that particular color, I need to make sure that I exercise myself in the right manner. Whether you know it or not, the doors of racism is still open. The third door we're going to leave you with is the church door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man in the end, he shall be saved. And she go in and out and find pasture. That word pasture that means good grazing land. You will find freedom uh, in Christ Jesus in the spiritual sense. Knowing that we worship God in spirit and in truth. But we must be careful not to allow or bring judgment or exclusion into God's church. The Bible tells us that you don't need to worry about the speck in somebody else's eye, you need to worry about the two by four that is in your own eyes. The only reason any of us are here right now uh, is because of the amazing grace of God. Jesus said in Revelation 22 and 17, whosoever will, let them come. Doors are nothing new, but we need to have a working understanding of doors. We must understand that the door to the church represents a picture of Jesus Christ. 
And if the church demonstrates God's ability to bring you out, the doors of the church also demonstrates God's ability to bring you in. If you find yourself in a tight situation, God is able to take you out. If you are down and could not get up, whenever road was blocked, when every door was shut, when there was no way up and no way out, God will bring you out. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad today that God has brought me through my ups and through my doors. And the reason why I know it was God, Jesus said that I am the door. Enter in by me and you should find good pastors. And I don't know about you today, but I found rest in Christ. I found rest in Christ even though I'm surrounded by racism. Even though I found myself surrounded by economical issues, I still trust in the God of yesteryears. And the reason I trust in God of yesteryears, he have not changed uh, not one moment. For I heard him say, I am Alpha and Omega. I am he who was, who is, and yet to be. I am the one who died for your sin on Calvary. I am uh, the bread of life. And I am uh, the one who got up early on Sunday morning. Ain't you glad today that you got a God who has all power and who can do anything but fail? Thank you so much for listening today. And don't forget, if you're not registered, get registered. And remember that Christ is the only door. He's going to bring us through this epidemic. Don't worry about it. Keep the faith. Keep on doing what you're doing. Stay six feet. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. And if you have to go to work every day, before you go into the house, take your clothes off. Wash them. Then take a child. May the Lord forever bless you. And may the Lord forever keep you as our prayer. Bye-bye.